Okay, uh, pedigrees, four modes of inheritance. So we're gonna take a look at the first example, the one that we're gonna look at, the example question is on page 55, and it's the first mode of inheritance in the notes called uh, autosomal recessive. So there's four modes, this being the first one. So autosomal, uh, these traits or genes are found on autosomal chromosomes. And in this case, of course, just like it says, it's recessive. Okay, so you must have two recessive uh, alleles before you have that trait or disorder. Uh, so let's just take a look at a pedigree. Now this is the first one, uh, the first pedigree that you've encountered. So on page 54, we kind of go over what all these different symbols mean. Now there's some really detailed ones on page 54, but there's just some basic ones that you want to know uh, when you're taking a look at some of the pedigrees that we're going to be looking at uh, in these examples coming up and also on your uh, your unit 5 exam and the final exam or final uh, final uh, uh, exam test there so uh, when we take a look at these uh, you notice first of all that they're circles so the circles uh, if you didn't know already represents females okay and the squares represent males okay so that's the main one that you want to know now when you see a line like this and then it's connected to these two individual, in this case, offspring, which are both females. Uh, that's exactly what that line is telling you, is that that couple, and they uh, indicate the generation by these Roman numerals. So Roman numerals is uh, just I, and individuals one and two from that first generation. And what they're saying is that they made it. Now, I don't know if they were married, not necessarily. I and mean, this is 2019. They don't have to be married to have babies. Uh, but this line does tell me that they did have some babies. And in this case, they had two females. And then it shows that they're connected to males. Well, these males have married into the family. So they're not blood relatives of generation one, one and one, two. Okay, so that line is really important. Uh, the colored in portion means that this person is, in this case, uh, affected by cystic fibrosis. So when they're colored in or shaded in like that, they have that disease or they have that trait if they're talking about a trait. Now, heterozygous individuals are often shown with a dot, but in most cases, uh, you have to determine what the heterozygous parents are. They're not gonna give you that information in many of those uh, pedigrees that we uh, see in our examples in that. Okay, so that's the basic premise of that. Again, go review page 54. This material will be provided in your data booklet for your final and for your exam. So it's not like you have to memorize, but after doing these many times, uh, you're gonna be quite familiar with some of the main uh, symbols for, uh, for pedigrees. So this one here is cystic fibrosis, and it says cystic fibrosis is an autosomal, so we will not be using X's and Y's in our, no, in our notation. Uh, we'll be using letters, and it is recessive. So in this particular example, I actually give you what the notation is for this, and the notation we said is if I have a capital C, doesn't matter what the other allele is, this is going to be a normal individual, okay? And you can see this on page 56. And then if I have little c's, this is going to be CF. And I know this, first of all, it's letters because it's autosomal. If it was sex linked, then you'd have X's and Y's with some superscripts. Uh, and uh, so that's why we have the letters. And because the cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disease, the only way that I can have it is if I have two individuals with little c's. That's my CF. As long as I have a big C, have to be normal. Okay? So, lots of different ways that they can ask you questions on this. Some of them will ask you the mode of inheritance. Now, there's four of them. This is just being one of them, autosomal recessive. And then in my notes, I give you a bunch of different pieces of evidence to support what mode of inheritance you think it is. A lot of questions will ask that. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. If you take a look at some of the, uh, uh, the uh, evidence to suggest that this trait represented on this pedigree is autosomal recessive, the first one that jumps out is it's skipping generations. You can see that generation two and generation three has nobody 
represented with CF. That's kind of a big indicator that this is a recessive uh, disorder. Uh, this one says affects females and males relatively easy. Well, there's not a lot of people infected, so it's relative. Uh, we don't know how many boys or girls. We could have all boys in one generation, all girls in the next or whatever. Uh, but certainly if you take a look at that, we see two females uh, affected by CF and one male. So that is relatively. It's not overwhelmingly males. It's not overwhelmingly females. So that would suggest that it's autosomal. Now, uh, the other piece of evidence that this is a um, recessive disorder is that heterozygous parents will not have the disorder. They're heterozygous and they're not affected by the trait of the disorder. Now, how do you determine who's heterozygous? One of the things I say in the notes is a big indicator is if you have kids with the disorder and without the disorder. That would suggest that the parents are heterozygous and if they are not affected, that tell you it's recessive. Just like this group right here. You see that Individuals 3, 1, 3, 2 are unaffected, but they had some kids with the disorder and some without. That suggests that both 3, 1 and 3, 2 are heterozygous because they don't have it. Recessive disorder. Okay, so that's some of the evidence that leads us to autosomal. Okay, so another thing that they'll ask you, and this is what they do in this part of the question, is they'll ask you to identify genotypes. Now you can only do that once you have a legend and you can only do a legend once you know the mode of inheritance, right? If you don't know if it's sex or autosomal, you're not gonna know in your note, uh, notation to have X's and Y's or letters or which ones are gonna be capital or which one's gonna be small case. So you have to know the mode of inheritance and you have to know the evidence to support that. Okay, so that also might be what they ask for is, like I said, the mode of inheritance. So uh, in one of the other videos, just take a look, I'll give you kind of like a summary flow chart of all those different pieces of evidence. So you can sift through that evidence really quickly and determine the mode of inheritance of that particular trait or disorder. Okay, so this one, we knew it was autosomal recessive. It just tells you that. Uh, capital C, doesn't matter what the other allele is, normal. Two little c's, CF. And then they'll ask you to uh, uh, identify some of the genotypes of these individuals. Okay, so let's go through this. I know that if anybody is unaffected, they must have at least a capital C. Okay, so I'm going to just put a line in because at this point maybe I don't know it. And sometimes, and that's one of the limitations of human pedigrees, is that they don't have a lot of offspring. So sometimes we can't fill in all of the genotype but we can do partial for sure if they are all unaffected or all these ones unaffected they must have at least capital C's okay now if they are affected look at our legend if they do have cystic fibrosis they must have little c so we can determine what those individuals are as well now I know the question here asks for some specifics but I just want you to show that when you know the mode of inheritance and you, uh, when you assign uh, notation, you can fill in a lot of this information right away here. Now, if I go back to individuals, the ones I have circle here, individuals 3, 1, and 3, 2, that's how they represent it. Roman numeral and then the actual number of the individual. Again, both of these must be heterozygous. How do I know that? Because they have some kids with the disease. And these, if they have little c's, little c's, that could only have come from one from each parent. Each parent must contribute a recessive allele if there were offspring with the recessive disorder. So I know those guys are heterozygous. Okay. Now, uh, this individual's four, three, we don't know. There's two possible ways that we could get an unaffected boy here. You could have a capital C and a capital C, or you could have a capital C and a little c, and both of those would represent as unaffected. Therefore, we say, I don't know what this one is. I know they have a capital C, but I don't know the whole genotype of that individual. 
Okay, let's go back up to the top. We know this person, little c, little c. Uh, both the kids that they had, so individuals 2, 2, and 2, 3, must be heterozygous because that is all mom could have donated to them. Okay, so we know that. All right, and lots of other ones here we don't know. This one we would know. When people marry into the family, often we don't have their history of CF in the family, so we don't exactly know if that person is homozygous, capital C, capital C, or heterozygous, and all their offspring as well. If they would have had another, let's say they just had another, hypothetically speaking, they had another offspring that was colored in, wow, then we could go in and we could fill in that unknown, but at this point we don't, okay? So we don't know that one, and we also, again, when people marry in, often we don't know what they're gonna have. We don't know if this individual 2-1 is a capital C or a little c, okay? So one of the limitations, not a lot of offspring, people marrying into the family, sometimes it's difficult to determine the, uh, the dominant trait here, dominant trait being normal here, often it's difficult to do unless they have a kid that was affected. Okay, so based on that, we can just fill in some of this information here. Individuals one, one has to be little c, little c. Uh, one, two is a c with a line. We don't know that genotype. We know they have a capital C because they're normal, but we don't know if they're homo or hetero. Individuals three, one, capital C, little c, we can see that. And again, uh, three, one, uh, because they had a kid that had cystic fibrosis, so that means they must be contributing a recessive allele. So sometimes you're gonna look at parents, sometimes you're gonna look at offspring to be able to fill in some of these genotypes. Uh, three, two also is heterozygous, okay, for the same reason, because they had a kid with CF. Individuals uh, four, one is affected, so we know all affected individuals with cystic fibrosis must have two recessive alleles, and same with four, two. An individual 4, 3, capital C, but we don't know the other one. Okay, it could be C, C, and they would still be unaffected, or they could be heterozygous, big C, little c, and they would still be unaffected because in this case, cystic fibrosis is the recessive, um, recessive allele. Okay, quite a bit to that, but uh, if you have any questions, again, look at pieces of evidence. Look for my summary video on all the different evidence to, uh, to determine what mode of inheritance this is. Uh, you can fill in uh, genotypes of offspring based on uh, the mode of inheritance, and then you can also do some probability questions, and that's what we'll show uh, in the next little video. Okay, any questions? Give me an email and we can hopefully help you out. Thanks guys.